everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna do some rejuvenation pruning on uh, my fig trees. And I thought this video would really drive the point home of why I do this and why I recommend it. And also why I recommend that you do this from the beginning um, of your tree's inception. So, you know, when we root these trees as young cuttings, um, I let them grow out for a year. And then a lot of them, I actually do what we're gonna do right now to this like seven-ish year old tree. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing, but right after that first year of rooting. So we root the cutting in the winter time. We let it grow all summer that year. The following spring, before the tree wakes up from dormancy, we do the rejuvenation pruning. Now, this tree here, I've talked about it in a different video here. This is my favorite tree, um, believe it or not. It's, my, it's not only my favorite tree, it's my favorite fruit. It's had a, a good form. It um, is an older tree of mine. Uh, it's called it en blanc and I love it so much, but it's not really the healthiest variety to begin with. This is a, um, a this Col de Blanc here came from Bode in, in France originally. And even the UC Davis version, I believe, of uh, Col de Blanc has just a lot of fig mosaic virus within it. Um, there's other varieties that are in a similar state with the virus. Um, Black Madeira from UC Davis, Aishia Black from UC Davis. Um, there's maybe a small handful of them that have the virus worse. I think Grease Day St. Jean has it pretty bad. There's a small handful of them that, uh, that have the virus worse than others. And you can shake it, right? You know, the virus is not the end of the world. Um, you can definitely feed your trees quite a bit and make sure that they're they're happy and healthy with enough water and they're going to shake most of the virus and they're going to perform well for you every year um, however what this technique does is actually really almost completely not necessarily eliminate but uh, really lessens the extent of the virus and you could do this preferably you'll really find good results in the ground if you do this um, on trees that are a bit more established because they have a lot more energy and what you can end up doing is actually cut them back what we're going to do right now is actually cut this back all the way down to the base and what that's going to essentially do is encourage the tree to send up suckers and lower growing nodes um, that the tree is inevitably going to have a healthier shoot that comes up from the base and then takes over as the main trunk of the tree. And that main trunk is just, again, a lot healthier, doesn't have nearly as much of the virus um, and sets the tree up for a good life, a long life, um, especially in a pot. I think it's really important. Um, now you'll see this pretty often in colder climates where you plant a fig tree in the ground, it doesn't survive the winter, and then it has to resend up all these shoots from the base. And this is kind of how a lot of us really came to appreciate this particular technique. Now, when you do this, a lot of it, that year, you're not really gonna get any fruit. You're gonna end up, most of the time, getting very, very vigorous shoots that will not fruit, which is what we want. So, um, you know, there is, I guess, some drawbacks to doing this because this particular tree, you know, had, has right now, you know, a number of fruits on it. It had a lot more on it. In fact, it was completely leafed out. You may think, wow, this tree's dormant. It's not, this is my, like I said, it's just very unhealthy. And believe it or not, with this variety in particular, I've noticed a strange phenomenon when the soil's a bit dried out, um, not completely dry, but it definitely needs some water. And then you go from a drier soil to watering it in really well, it doesn't like that. And therefore it responded two years now in a row of defoliating. This year it defoliated all of its leaves. There's one little leaf here left. 
which means that if it's defoliated, the fruits on here are just not gonna ripen. This tree is not gonna do anything for me this year. If they do ripen, they're gonna be almost tasteless. So why not do the rejuvenation pruning, right? Why not do it on a tree like this where there is no potential for fruit, like your, your first year trees that you root from cutting, you're not really gonna get a whole lot of fruit off of them anyway. And the fruit quality you do get is gonna be low because the tree is just young. And you really need three to five years before the fruits on those trees mature. Um, if you graft it, it's a bit earlier. You may save yourself a year or two, but you know, for the most part, it doesn't, it just makes a whole lot of sense to do that when a tree is younger. And now that since I've had this tree, I've learned this, this technique, I've learned the power of what this is. We're gonna basically chop this thing all the way down um, to rejuvenate it, to get it established once again, and um, have ourselves just a long-lived Col de Don Blanc that should put out in the long run a lot more fruit. Um, instead of just letting it do its thing and hopefully it recovers and crossing my fingers, you know, and giving it a bunch of food this year and, and water, we're gonna get a bunch of shoots from the base that are gonna form a much healthier tree. So I'm gonna come up from this. Really, there's not many buds because this trunk is so thick. I mean, it's basically two inches in diameter. Um, you can't really even see too many of the nodes. They're not very visible. I mean, they're there, but um, what I'm gonna do is basically do about three rings up, um, which every ring, should there should be at least a couple nodes at this age of the tree. And I'm gonna try to do this on an angle. And uh, that'll be it. We're gonna do three rings up. And I wish, the ideal scenario is that it sends up a sucker from the from the roots. So yeah, you can you can leave some of the base here. Gotta get this wire out of my way. You can leave some of the base and hope that a node pops from the base of the trunk, which in most scenarios it will, especially a tree this old. But it's probably not going to be as healthy as a as a sucker that comes up from the roots. And that's really what you want. And this isn't gonna happen instantly. We're now almost at June 1st. So I've realized, you know, earlier in the season, it is gonna get very warm here that this is a good time to be doing something like this. Although, you know, if you gotta do what you gotta do, but I would have rather, much rather have done this when the tree was dormant. And that way the tree isn't gonna lose out too much. I mean, this is gonna sort of, in a way, hurt the tree because I'm taking away all the carbohydrates that are up here in the branches. Um, because when the tree wakes up from dormancy, right, all that is stored in the roots and it just goes up the tree into the higher points. So now I'm cutting off everything. And if the energy was stored at the roots, I would have a much healthier, stronger tree. But. It is what it is, and there you go, guys. That is rejuvenation pruning. And uh, I hope this, you know, made a lot of sense to you guys out there and not just, um, you know, obviously how to do this. It's really simple. Just cut it back. But when as well and why. So, um, Hopefully this becomes a technique that you guys think more about. And, um, you know, as I said, if I would have done this from the very, very beginning, I mean, I didn't have this tree from the beginning. Um, I bought this from somebody. And if they had done that, let's say, or if I had done that with a different tree and did this in its first year, I wouldn't be doing this right now. Six or seven years later, uh, I wouldn't have to do this. I could always, cut the tree back, rejuvenate, prune it at a much higher height, instead of doing this all the way down here, which is just, you know, it's pretty drastic. But, you know, I could always, if I wanted to, come back to like fruiting branches or to scaffolds and rejuvenate, prune that way. But because this tree has a very, and I'll show it to you, I'll also show it to you. It's not just the, the you know, the fig mosaic virus, 
but this wood is not really all that healthy at this point. You know, look how many uh, points here, these cuts, these pretty improper cuts, how little actual cambium there probably is over time. The cambium underneath this bark gets a little bit destroyed and in different little spots that you may not even be able to see because, well, you can't. You can't see through the bark, but underneath this bark is probably issues and places of cambium that doesn't look all that great. Not to mention some of these big cuts that are creating these big scars and little knots in the tree um, all over the place. It's just resulting in wood up here that's just not very productive. So yeah, we, we just want a healthy base and that's our big reasoning here for doing this. Now I can, I can stick a lot of these in the ground. Um, I could root these if I wanted to. And uh, I think I will. I'll probably stick a number of these cuttings here in the ground or something and uh, try to make use of this in some way and not get rid of this wood because I know somebody's going to be like, Ross, what are you doing with that wood? But, you know, it is what it is. So, again, I hope you guys learned something. If you did, hit the subscribe button, please. Um, check out our other videos on this topic. We have a number of them now on rejuvenation pruning, they're titled. And uh, check out our blog, figboss.com. I'll see you guys soon.